on these uh, these excerpts from the dialogues, the three dialogues given to us by Barclay, he's asking the question, uh, or he's, he's trying to answer the question, I should say, uh, are there material objects? Or is there a material substance? Now, um, just to be clear, uh, he thinks that there are trees around me. Sure. If you were out here, say, yeah, there, there are trees around you. There be trees and grass and and uh, rocks and everything else. He's, he's not doing Descartes. Right? Descartes is going to say, you know, at least in the first meditation, you don't know that there's anything around you. You can't know that. Barclay's going to say, yeah, you, you know that there are trees and that there's grass and the sky and bugs and animals and everything else. You know that. However, none of it's material. Right? None of it has a material substance. So in this dialogue, you know, we have the two characters, uh, Philonous and Hylas. Uh, Philonous, in case you haven't figured it out, is basically Barclay. Right? This Barclay's uh, voice box. And uh, Hylas is kind of the counterpoint to uh, Philonous. Uh, now before you <laughs> dismiss his conclusion too fast, you know, take a minute to listen to his reasoning. Uh, because he's, he's, you know, once again, he's not saying that there's nothing around me. No, he takes seriously the idea that there are things around you. And seriously the idea that you can know that there are things around you. In fact, it's one of the things that both Philonous and Hylas agree on really quickly, is if your theory of what exists or your theory of knowledge reduces to skepticism to claim that there's nothing around you, that's a bad theory. So, uh, Barclay is not doing that. Barclay is saying, no, there's very definitely things around you. Just none of it's material. And the reason why he says this is because he takes very seriously an idea which you probably give at least some credence. And the idea is that uh, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. So the first thing that Hylas and Philonus have to do is set up a distinction between sensation and object. Okay? Now sensation is simply the act of the mind perceiving. So I'm looking around me and I see greens, I see blue, the sky, uh, I see some browns from uh, the trunks, right? So I see greens, blues, uh, browns, I smell the air, it's humid and it's warm, uh, the ground is rough, it's solid, right? These are all sensations that I have. Now the object is, is the, the thing that's perceived, okay? So looking around me, and this is where Hylas and Philonus agree, right? Uh, Philonus is not going for skepticism. He says, no, no I, I do know the things around me. So the objects of sensation are the trees, uh, you know, the, uh, the grass, the leaves, the rocks, the sky, the breeze, the air. All of that are, the, are objects. Now, um, let, you know, just to reiterate, they agree on this distinction. Now the question isn't whether we have whether we perceive the objects around us, right? The question, the question isn't that. The question is, what are the objects that we perceive? So the next distinction that Barclay makes is the distinction between uh, an idea and a notion. Now, an idea is what's immediately perceived in the mind. Uh, and a notion is, is not. <laughs> a notion, um, you might uh, better think of notion as uh, suspicion. We might say suspicion these days, as opposed to notion. So the idea is, uh, is this. So I'm looking around me now, and I have lots of ideas. I have lots of ideas of trees and grass and sky. Or that's immediately perceived. That's right here, right in front of me. Uh, it's in my consciousness. Right? It's, it, it, it's right there. Right? I see the trees, and I see... Uh, right. I, I even see that trail right there. I see that trail. I have an idea of the trail. Now, I have an idea of the trail, but I don't know what put it there. Right? I don't know what made the trail. Now, I, I have lots of notions, I have suspicions, right? Uh, maybe it was uh, volunteers. Volunteers made the trail. Maybe it was um, animals. Animals made the trail. Maybe it was city workers, right? Uh, maybe nobody made it at all. Maybe this is just the way the water flowed down the hillside. Right? Those are all notions. None of those are immediately perceived in the mind. 
Not a single one of them. All right? So uh, an idea is, is what I have immediately, what I immediately perceive in my mind. And um, Barclay's pushing on this. He said, look, ideas are what you know. Right? That's your knowledge, is, is what's immediately perceived in the mind. Notions are not. I don't know that city workers made this. I don't know the volunteers made this. I don't know the animals or water or whether it just happened. I, I don't know any of those because none of that's immediately perceived. Those are all related to my ideas, right? So I have an idea of the path and have uh, of the curvature of the path and, and the trees. I have ideas of all of that. But I only have notions, only have suspicions as to uh, what made that. Right. So that's ideas contrasted to notions. And uh, for Barclay, ideas are where it's at. Ideas uh, are, is your knowledge. So this brings us to material substance or material substratum. Yeah. So uh, this is what Hylas thinks and uh, what we think, typically what we think exists too. So we look around us and we perceive green and brown and the sky and everything else. Now green and, bro uh, green and brown and blue and warm and rough, right? these are all modes. A mode is a way a thing can exist. Let's say that again. A mode is a way a thing can exist, or even quality. So many said qualities are, are, are like are pretty much like modes. So this is a way that this material substance here exists. It exists rough, and it exists brown, and I can peel off the bark in a certain way, and that's you know, kind of fibrous. Uh, so these are modes to this thing. It's tall. You you can't see how tall this is, but it's a bit taller than I am. Uh, it's sol solidly in the ground, right? I can't, I can move a little bit, but I can't move it too much, right? These are all modes for this material substance. And what a material substance is, is what supports the modes. The material substance is here, and it's supporting, in some way, the brown, the rigid, that sound, the rough, right? Uh, the material substance is not itself those modes, it's not identical to those modes, but it is instead what supports the modes. So now both Hylus and Philonus are going to say, yeah, this is a tree. And Hylus is going to say what this tree is is a material substance that exists in particular kinds of ways. Now this is kind of specific language, but you know, we, we tend to do the same thing, right? We talk about this tree as being a uh, material thing and it has properties or it has a chemical composition or uh, we try to give it some kind of description of physics and, and that's fine. All right, Hylus is going to say, yeah, those are modes. Right? It's chemical composition, that's a mode. It's, uh, you know, properties, physical properties in terms of being rigid and uh, that, you know, being a plant, right? That, those are all modes. Okay. So this is what Hylus says. All right. There's a material substance here. Now, it's not the modes that you see. There's a material substance underneath it. There's a material substance supporting it. Supporting, holding those modes in place. Uh, but the material substance is not itself those modes. All right, so we have our di different definitions, okay? Now, kind of the, the rough version, maybe like a first approach in understanding what Philonus is gonna say, is that, um, I mean, the first objection that Philonus brings against Hylas is, is this, to say, look, you know, you, you and I both agree, we look at this tree, right? And we say, uh, there, there's a tree here, right? And we both agree that we perceive extension, right? That just means it's physical dimensions. We perceive its length, its width, its depth. We perceive brown and rough, that sound. We perceive all of that. We don't disagree about that. That much we agree on. And what Philonus says is that much is what I have is of what I have an idea. 
I immediately perceive that brown, that net, that sound there, okay? The extension. I perceive all of that. That's the only way I know that, right? is through perception. Okay. So Philonus says, of that much I have an idea. Now, to get to material substance, we have to say there's something underneath it. There's something underneath it. And this is where uh, Hylas has a distinction between modes and the material substance. Right? Both Hylas and Philonus agree they perceive the modes. Right? And then Philonus pushes Hylas on this. Say, yeah, you perceive the modes, but you say the material substance is what supports the modes. Right? The, mode is, the modes are extension, brown, and rough, but the material substance is none of those. Right? It's what perceives the modes. Right, excuse me, it's what supports the modes. Okay. Well, then you don't have an idea of material substance because that's not immediately in your mind. You have to suppose that it's there. You have to have some kind of suspicion that it's there. And this is where we get, you know, where uh, Philonus is really pushing on this distinction between an idea and a notion. And at this point, Hylas is like, oh, wow, you're right. You know, there's there's uh, a material, I say there's a material substance there, but so far I just have a notion. Now, Philonus is going to take one step further and say, look, yeah, you have a notion of it, but even the notion isn't going to work. So the next move that Philonus makes is really pushing on this distinction between material substance and mode. Material substance and mode. So here's what uh, Philonus is going to do. Philonus is going to take Hylas and say, "Look, you know, here we we perceive uh, the trees, and they're at different extensions, right? Different depths. And then there's the hill behind all of it. The hill is furthest back, and that's that's the furthest thing. That, that's the thing that's furthest back we perceive. And we both agree that we perceive extension. We both have an idea of extension. Right? That." Extension is immediately present in our minds. Okay. So this much, both Hylas and Philonus agree. Now, Philonus is going to push on Hylas some more and say, look, um, if you say that there's also material substance, right, then the claim is, is we have this extension here, which we perceive, and that's an idea, and then you say there's a material substance supporting the extension. Right. So, Here's a question. Is the material substance extended? Now, it might look like he's just kind of repeating himself, but, but his point is this. that Look, I perceive the extension. There's the extension. That's it right there. Now, is there material substance underneath all of it doing that? To which Hylas says, yes. Yes, there's the material substance underneath all of it. Okay, so then we have the extension, and then we have the material substance beneath it. But then the material substance is now extended again. Hmm? So I had the extension already. That's the mode. Now I have the material substance. So say it's also extended, but that's another mode. So then I have extension under extension. Okay. Well, then, same question. Is that material substance extended? Well, then we say yes, right? We say, we'll try it. We'll say yes. It, you know, it has an extension underneath it. So then we have the extension, the mode, which is under... <laughs> which is on top of another extension, which is on top of another extension, which is on top of the substance that underlies all of it. But that's impossible, or you know, at the very least, weird, because now we have this is set up for this infinite regress of extension all the way down. We never reach substance, and that's at best weird, if not impossible. Now, what's Hyla supposed to say? That matter is not extended. That seems bizarre. So what Philonus concludes from this is, is, look, we have a deep problem here with this idea of material substance. You're not going to say material substance isn't extended, but you're also not going to agree to this infinite regress of uh, extension. Now, already, you know, you've already agreed that, you know, Philonus is talking to Hylas, you've already agreed that the material substance substratum is not an idea. It's at best a notion. But now this notion is starting to result in deep, deep confusions. 
So why should we accept this notion? This final argument that Philonus provides is kind of a generalization of the last argument dealing with extension. So uh, what Philonus and Hylus both agree on is that when I perceive these modes, when I perceive green and blue and, and all of that, well, that's in my mind, right? That's in my mind. And Hylus uh, takes it the further step and says, yeah, the, that's in my mind, uh, and there's something out there which is somehow supporting these modes. Right? There's that material substance out there supporting the modes. Okay. So, if I'm, if I, if an object has this, has these modes, has color and extension and sound and taste and, and all this, it has these modes. Hylus says, if it has these modes, then there's something that's supporting these modes. But now they both, or at least Philonus, kind of pushes Hylus to, to see this. Well, if there's something supporting these modes, if there's something that's supporting extension, supporting color, supporting sound, uh, supporting all of this, then whatever that is, that material substance, whatever it is, it's not those modes. It has neither color, nor figure, nor extension. It has no sight, no taste, no smell, no hearing, nothing like that. So looking at this, you know, looking at this metal rail here, right? We, Hylas is saying there is something underneath all of this. But since all of this are, are, are modes, right, it itself is not any of those modes. So material substance has no color, has no extension, has no sound, no taste, no smell. Well, if it doesn't have any of this, Right? You and I and Philonus are just kind of looking at Hylus at this point and say, so you're saying there's something there which has no qualities. Well, that thing doesn't exist. Right? There's nothing there if it has no qualities, if it has no modes at all. It, 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 it doesn't exist. All right. Well, if it doesn't exist, then there's not something supporting all of these modes. The modes just exist. Right? That, that's, what, that's what the thing is, are the modes, not what's supporting the modes. Well, so uh, this kind of wraps, this kind of leads very quickly to um, Philonus's reductio. Is, you know, Hylus wants to say that this, there's something that's supporting the mo modes and then that there is not something that's supporting the modes. I mean, that's what follows from his reasoning. So in the end, if we say, if we start out with the uh, assumption that if I perceive an object with these modes, then there's something supporting the modes. We reach the conclusion that it's false that I perceive an object with these modes and there's something, I'm sorry, if I'm perceiving these objects, then there's something supporting the, uh, uh, the modes. Well, then all we're left with is I perceive these modes. I perceive the object that is color, that is sound, that is extension, that is taste, that is touch, all these perceptions. That's what I perceive, and that's what it is. There's no material substance beneath it.